Clash of the Titans is one of the most iconic Ray Harryhausen films of all time, which is why it's kind of sad to see Clash of the Titans remade as a film that nearly no one would ever call iconic, even if it's really, really cool. Welcome to Pointless Witticisms, where I talk about stupid things that I watched at one point or another, and we are presently in the midst of a montage of bad quasi grecian films with a lot of CGI, with Percy Jackson's live adaptation behind us, and the Clash of the Titans needless sequel ahead of us, and that other weird one, Immortals, somewhere on the side. Why talk about Clash of the Titans? Because the original was iconic. It was from an age of films where a silly looking man in a toga with a sword whacking at claymation models was the law of the land. And where those special effects were the most impressive thing possible. Decades later, and the CGI of the time is used to tell a more complex and yet somehow more simple tale about how the son of a god must beat another god and his pet monster by killing a third monster and like his legal father, his mother's husband, that's sort of the thing that's from the original Perseus myth, but that gets, you know, chucked out in the adaptations, you know, because Perseus is just sort of a dramatic hero in these, and Zeus is a loving father, where it's sort of just like a thing in the myth. To take the original myth of Perseus and then remove most of it is the best way to get the plot of the original Clash of the Titans if you then poured more and more and more of other myths into it. Like he has a fight with a two-headed dog at one point and there's a really big scary bird that carries the soul of a woman off every night when she tries to sleep and he goes and fights those. And, you know... Credits to the 2010 Clash of the Titans because they make that a bit more suitable. Now, where the original Perseus's goal in the myth is to vanquish a Gorgon, and he just sort of accidentally stumbles on an unrelated giant monster on the way back home. Here, in Clash of the Titans, Perseus is trying to vanquish a giant monster and is looking for Medusa's head so that he can vanquish it. Medusa's origin is, as always, a bit of a mess, what with it being, um, well, you've got it uh, both ways, actually, whereas um, in some interpretations of the myth it's not exactly consensual that uh, Medusa, a priestess of Athena, is uh, having sexual relations in her temple with the god Poseidon, whereas, you know, in this film it's just sort of Oh, yeah, she totally did it. It's her fault or whatever. But, you know, she gets turned into a monster. She's got the power to destroy pretty much anyone by turning them to stone. And, yeah. Can Sam Worthington, son of Zeus, star of James Cameron's Avatar, vanquish the awesome might of the Kraken, the Medusa, the giant scorpions, some random evil dude who made a deal with Hades and has blood that makes giant scorpions, Yes, yes he can. It's an action film. Our lead is a demigod with hot bod, and he stars alongside some immortal guardian woman that flirts with him and teaches him how to fight, and some princess who gets tied to a stake for most of this film and then becomes an action heroine in the sequel. Now, the value of Clash of the Titans cannot be weighed without thinking why watch this film instead of the original, because, of course, you would want to watch the original one because it is a classic with Ray Harryhausen animation, and this film likes to constantly compare itself to the original and try and upstage it. There are a few jokes here and there, like Perseus finds a robot owl sidekick from the first Clash of the Titans movie, and then somebody else calls the owl rubbish or something like that, and that's a bit sad because people like that owl and they just chuck it away. But hey, it's a cameo and it gets another cameo in the next film and gets called rubbish again. The Medusa fight in Clash of the Titans is itself an attempt to upstage the original Clash of the Titans Medusa's fight, and damn if that doesn't work, even if uh, both of the films have sort of contributed to this weird cultural identity now, where Medusa has a snake tail and is an archer. Uh, as in the original Clash of the Titans, she's got snakes for hair, she has scales, she has a snake tail for her lower body, but in the 2010 one, of course, she has to be kind of prettyish and stuff, though she does do this creepy facial contortion extended jaw thing like a striking Kobo... 
like a striking cobra or a viper or a snake when she's about to petrify somebody where her jaw extends open, her fangs elongate a little, and of course she's got a bosom in this version, but really that's about to be expected, really. And the whole fight with Medusa is really cool, and it's worth checking out the 2010 Clash of the Titans for that one fight alone. The other scene, of course, that's worth watching is their take on the Kraken, the biggest pop cultural legacy of the original Clash of the Titans, besides, of course, the whole Medusa now has a tail thing. And they go and upstage the Kraken in this film, because whereas the original film has a couple of, like, creepy shots of the Kraken and tidal waves and stuff, uh, this film has the Kraken's sacrifice chained to a big dramatic building right in the middle of the city, with the Kraken looming out of the water, huge and terrible, monstrous and roaring, clawing and crushing stuff on its way to claiming its sacrifice, and then of course, at the last possible moment, it sees Medusa's eyes and is turned to stone, and slowly this gigantic, colossal statue, mountainy thing, Kraken, begins to fall apart under its own weight, and leads to more crushing, smashing, general chaos. Is Clash of the Titans good? Not really. It's not a good film by any real measure, but it is a great spectacle, and I keep coming back to watch it just for how grand and epic the scenes are when it isn't just actor Sam Worthington talking to a bearded Mads Mikkelsen, or Ralph Fiennes' Hades talking to Liam Neeson's Zeus. Liam Neeson is, of course, in this film, and at one point he says, release the Kraken. But uh, he also says a lot of other stuff that isn't as iconic as release the Kraken, like a load of sad, long conversations with Hades about how the gods love the mortals' worship, but Hades can't have mortals' worship because nobody worships the god of death, they just fear him. But now he lives on their fear. And really, it's kind of odd that Ralph Fiennes doesn't sound 100% like Voldemort in this, because he easily could have. Is this film worth watching? Yes, it's about as silly of a film as you can conceive of, and it's big stupid spectacle. A final note, of course, that it has a very early 2010s or late 2000s soundtrack that's kind of avatarish. You know, the way things were at the time, where you've got big or whatever, and other silly noises being thrown in. And of course, you've got to have a big booming bum 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 or whatever. This adventure soundtrack, of course, compared to the original, which is just a lot of loud, loud noises being played while people click, clack, cling, clang their swords together. This was Clash of the Titans, a silly, pointless thing that many people would have forgotten of, but for some reason they decided to make a sequel of, and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about that one in a bit. Next up is Immortals, though, which was made by the people that made 300. They won't let you forget it.